Hello, this is Hitoshi Matsuyama, a PhD student at Nagoya University, Japan. This video is for the presentation at the Second International Conference on Activity and Behavior Computing 2020 held in Kitakyushu, Japan. This research aims to explore the dance activity recognition method with LSTM using wearable sensor data and video of dance performance. So let's move on to the conference recording. Hello, I'm Hitoshi Matsuyama, a PhD student at Nagoya University in Japan. I'm so excited to present on our study on volume dance figure classification with LSTM using multimodal sensors. So in this presentation, I'll talk about volume dance figure classification using LSTM. We have used approximately 2.5 hours of dance data, which contains 13 figure classes and 7 dancers. And the modalities are acceleration, angular velocity, and body parts coordinates. And as a result, we've obtained a F1 score of 0.86 with a trial-based classification of 13 dance figure types. Then let me introduce volume dance and dance figure. Volume dance is a dance activity performed by a pair of two dancers. And there are two genres. The first one is standard and the second is Latin American on which we are focusing. And dance figure is a group of steps which have a name, which have a technical description and each of which is a component of dance performance. And there are several works on dance activity recognition. The major approach is to use visual sensors and perform pose estimation. There are another approach using devices such as using IMU footwear. Both of those approaches has its advantages and disadvantages. So in this work, we mainly used visual sensor and other wearable sensor to reinforce the recognition model. In our previous works, we have shown a preliminary research on dance figure classification method and classification with bigger data compared to the previous work using conventional machine learning methods. And the purpose of this work is to build a recognition model using LSTM. LSTM performs good with sequential data and basically it's free from feature engineering and may bring a higher accuracy with a big amount of data. This is an overview of our method. We first acquire data of performance from accelerometer, gyroscope, and video. Then the 25 two-dimensional joint positions are acquired by pose estimation. After that, we perform some pre-processing and then put them into deep neural network to obtain the predicted result. Let me talk about pre-processing. There are missing values in joint position data due to self occlusions. An example of right arm occlusion and interpolation is shown on the right top of the slide. We handle them with spline interpolation using values before and after the point. And for body coordinates, we have applied following processing methods in order to obtain the real figure movement information. First, we set the middle hip coordinates at the start of each figure to the origin. Then, we convert the rest of the data in the frame to relative positions to the origin. Finally, we convert the rest of the coordinates in the sequence to relative positions to the first frame. In order to create input data form, it is necessary to make label data. In this research, we calculate the figure size, the number of samples in a figure, using sampling rate, BPM, and how many bits there are in one figure. 
Finally, we determine there are 288 samples in a figure and label the data according to that information. And to create data form, we apply the sliding window algorithm, changing the overlap sizes from 0 to 75%. The created data were put into the LSTM cells. But before that, we add the dropout layer, then LSTM layer, and perform the batch normalization before the activating layer. As we chose only one wearable sensor among six, there are six wearable sensor modalities and 50 joint position modalities. For each time step, those 56 modalities of data are put into the LSTM cells to obtain the hidden status and output. As validation method, we adopted two types of cross-validations. The first one is trial-based cross-validation. We split the data so that a sample in the same record does not appear in both training and testing. The second one is user-based cross-validation, where we perform leave one user out method. And as an evaluation method, we adopted F1 score. And these are the results. First, I'll show you the result without overlaps, which means all sequential data in the figure are put into the LSTM cell to obtain the results. Using only acceleration and angular velocity, we obtain F1 score of 0.68 with the trial based and 0.50 with the user based. And using only joint positions, we obtain 0.80 with the trial based and 0.58 with the user based. And with the hybrid method using both modalities, we obtain 0.86 with the trial-based cross-validation and 0.63 with the user-based. As predicted, the hybrid method brought the best score. However, the result using body joints was not so bad compared to the hybrid method. Then let's move on to the results with sliding window algorithm. The table on the lower left shows the results of each modality's overlap for each evaluation method. Among all, the best score was 0.86 with the hybrid method without overlaps. And it is confirmed that the accuracy and F1 score get low with more overlaps. Here's the discussion. There are three main problems. The first one is low accuracy with wider overlaps. We consider this is because the windows across figure transition reduce the accuracy. Therefore, we need to improve our method for figure scale independent classification. We need to acquire more data and analyze figure transition rules. The second one is user independent classification. It was difficult to handle the difference of body shapes and dancing styles. This may be solved with a bigger amount of data and developing preprocessing method. The third one is occlusion problem. As dancing activities contain body rotation, it was hard to avoid occlusions. So it is important to develop a better method to interpolate the missing value or improve the pulse estimation method. Before moving on to the conclusion, let me introduce the volume dance dataset. We have opened the dataset and add some description on GitHub. If you are interested, please access the page. Here's the conclusion. In this work, we developed a volume dance figure classification method with LSTM. The amount of data was 2.5 hours there were 13 figure classes and 7 dancers. We used acceleration, gyroscope, and body joint parts. And as a result, we obtained the F1 score of 0.86 with the hybrid method. From now on, we need to acquire more data, 
analyzed figure transition rules and developed a better preprocessing method. And we have opened the dataset and introduction, which can be accessed via the link. And that's about it. Thank you for listening. And now I'm ready to answer any questions. Thank you.